CBDCs, Central Bank Crypto Corruption? Crypto is set to revolutionize mainstream finance in the near future, having recently been accepted as legal tender across the South American nation of El Salvador, as well as heavy institutional pushes within the United States for Bitcoin exchange traded funds, even legacy investment firms are starting to accept the cryptocurrency future. It was recently reported that an impressive 80% of central banks around the planet have been researching and considering some form of cryptocurrency integration in the near future, primarily in the form of CBDCs. In fact, a few central banks have actually released their very own CBDCs with many more on the horizon. What exactly is a CBDC? Why are central banks opting for this approach towards decentralized finance? And most importantly, what do CBDCs mean for the rest of the DeFi space at large? Great to see you again at No Cap Crypto. We have an exciting discussion planned, taking a very close look at CBDCs and what they could spell out for the future of crypto on the main stage. Make sure you stick around and pay close attention because the nature of these relatively novel investment opportunities will definitely interest you. Let's clear the air first. What exactly is a CBDC? This refers to a central bank digital currency, a very strange concept considering the fact that cryptocurrency is inherently decentralized and that a central bank is the antithesis of this concept. Although the idea had been played around with from as early as the 1990s, it was only until the recent crypto boom that CBDC development and research have rapidly increased. Often considered a digital fiat currency, the current concept of a CBDC is currently inspired by traditional cryptos and blockchain protocols, although their implementation very likely will not require a distributed ledger as a blockchain. Although still in the early days, the very first major economy CBDC release was China's digital RMB seeing public testing as of April 2021. Of the many CBDC attempts since their conception in the 90s, we've slowly begun to see an increasing trend of CBDCs looking to integrate and employ blockchain technology. Although the decentralized notion behind the blockchain is highly unattractive for any central bank due to the lack of regulation and control, the many other advantages of the trustless blockchain system are extremely desirable. The current banking system requires the transferal of mountains of data and transactional history between one another, leaving a lot of room for error and a highly vulnerable mechanism that countless parties have taken advantage of. The usage of the blockchain alongside CBDC technology is set to see a faster and more efficient banking system with a shared and validated ledger, a CBDC blockchain. Contrary to standard DeFi protocols, the central bank does have the authority to alter transactional history as well as the supply of the currency itself. Besides the governing technology and consensus mechanism, CBDCs greatly differ from decentralized finance due to centralization, lack of privacy, and decreased volatility. Besides the Chinese digital RMB, a number of countries have also deployed their own native CBDC assets. The Bahamas is preparing for the heavy push into its national sand dollar, with Turkey and Ukraine rumored to follow. However, the reasons for many countries and their interest in CBDC integration are certainly less than honorable. Although China is very forward-thinking as a nation, both Turkey and Ukraine have seen unbelievably steep inflation rates as of late and many are assuming the turn to CBDCs as a simpler means of controlling the rapid shift to hyperinflation and a rampantly weak currency. This is comparable to the Venezuelan government's decision to create and fully support the Petromoneda. A government-issued cryptocurrency was set to save the rapidly inflating Venezuelan Bolivar. Also a fiat-backed project, the Petromoneda was dead on arrival and it's clear to see how many governments and federal reserves will utilize the unparalleled power of CBDCs in order to exercise a level of control over a national economy like never before. There are many nations that do understand the many benefits that CBDC involvement provides the legacy banking system. Countries with solid and stable economies such as France, Switzerland, Sweden, and Norway have actively started involving themselves in the process. The widespread European interest has led the European Central Bank to test its CBDC technology on Ethereum. The largest effect that this looming CBDC integration has on the pre-existing crypto world is somewhat surprising and and is set to see some extremely surprising blockchains and offerings enter the mainstream. But before we get into that, we need to ask. 
Hey, are you liking the video so far? If so, I have good news. Make sure you like and subscribe to No Cap Crypto because we release videos like this every week. Also, comment below and let us know what you think about CBDCs and what that means for crypto. Also, make sure to stay to the end because we're about to get into the serious repercussions that CBDCs could mean for retail investors. The United States is actually considered the most crypto-friendly nation on the planet. Although the SEC has certainly been giving the crypto landscape a difficult time, it's comparatively easier to actively be involved with decentralized finances. There should be no doubt that the US government and the Federal Reserve are actively considering CBDC options. However, there's little to no information regarding the subject. As a retail crypto investor, it's clear to see that the incoming CBDC integration with traditional blockchain protocols will certainly have a huge rippling effect through traditional DeFi. Perhaps the largest effect can be seen through what blockchains these nations and central banks opt to support. Ethereum seems to be the clear leader with many nations across the planet admiring the project's accessibility and ease of use. Although the many glaring issues with the protocol in regards to lengthy transactional times and high gas fees should be rectified through the proof-of-stake integration that's currently underway. Bitcoin, unfortunately, may sit as the market mover across crypto and is even considered a legal tender in El Salvador, but the protocol itself is far too volatile and relatively archaic to even be considered for various CBDC applications. With the US yet to announce its blockchain protocol selection, many analysts have claimed Cardano the likely candidate. However, there are few that believe Algorand could potentially become the basis for the United States central bank digital currency. Although considerably less known, Algorand was created by an award-winning computer scientist and professor from MIT, Silvio Micali. Considered the blockchain of the future, Algorand aims to further facilitate the convergence between decentralized and traditional financial applications. Of all the nations covered, China and the digital yen are the furthest ahead. Currently undergoing the later stages of testing, the global superpower was one of the first nations that begun seriously considering CBDCs as the future of the banking sector. However, this motivation stemmed from the fact that China's tech giants had captured the sector. Corporations such as Alipay and WeChat currently dominate the digital payment space across China. The Chinese government prefer to be involved and maintain an active role in verifying payments as well as ensuring that no illegal activity was occurring. China is actively distributing free digital yen through cash prizes and lotteries in a push to motivate its citizens to adopt the new digital currency. Various subways and public sector services are now accepting payment in digital yen, with the expectation that the digital yen will be the primary mode of payment across the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. On the contrary, China has been actively cracking down on cryptocurrencies since their arrival. Although there exist millions of crypto farmers across China, the government has been constantly looking to shut down these operations. It's clear to see that the Chinese government believes traditional digital assets will impede the effectiveness and popularity of their CBDC. CBDC stripped the technology of blockchain protocols and leave behind the brilliant concepts and ideology of decentralized finance, the lack of regulation, complete anonymity, and financial freedom that traditional cryptocurrencies offer their users is certainly not the case with CBDCs. We shall soon see unbelievable levels of market manipulation, inflation, and currency control through the application of CBDCs. Previously, inflating a currency required the physical printing of money into circulation. CBDCs are the digital alteration of a single value. The world is moving forward and it's clear to see that the usage of CBDCs is the final stand of the centralized legacy financial world in the face of the brilliant tide of decentralized finance and cryptocurrencies. Let us know what you think about CBDCs and the future of the Federal Reserve and central banks in the comments below. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor and that this video exists purely for educational purposes. Please do your own research and make your own intelligent financial decisions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our next video, and I'll see you in the next one.